shit. Video vlog number three now. Uh, I know I said fuck this camera in the last video, but no, I have to keep doing this with that camera. Okay. Um, this one, I'm gonna talk about how to find bandmates. So, what what are we doing to find like new uh, new bandmates? Um, couple of questions you need to ask yourself. You really need to know what you want. So, either A, you want to be in a band with other people, you know, like kind of people who are in the band, like in an equity type position, uh, and then the other option is being a solo act and you have like session members or people that are um, usually paid. So there's some pros and cons to that. The uh, pros to having people in the band is that you have people who have some creative influence, can help you make decisions, in some cases will contribute, you know, finances and money, other resources like practice based vehicles, you know, it's good to have someone with a big car. Um, the downside is that it's harder to find those people. Um, and you also, because they're contributing more, you kind of have to rely on them to just be responsible uh, unto themselves. Um, it's also why it's taken a long time for me to find the full lineup that I'm really happy with with them and all. We're still working on that. Uh, the pros to having the session members is uh, you're going to pay them. so. To them, you know, you're gonna find people who are just doing their job, basically, um, and because it's a, it's like a financial business transaction, they might be a little more reliable. I mean, that's obviously not universally true, but if money's on the line, there's usually a little more accountability there. Um, but the downside is that it's a completely different artistic endeavor. I mean, being a solo act with supporting members is completely different than having a band. Um, so, uh, for for me, there's three steps. Or three key ways to uh, to find new members. Okay, number one uh, seems like it's unrelated, but to me, it's the most important thing is that you yourself have to be doing stuff for the band. Uh, somehow, this is just how the universe works. I don't know, but every time I stop really putting energy and effort into making music, going to practice, I get distracted. Life gets in the way. Somehow, the other people who are involved with the band, like. Less, less gets contributed from them as well. Like less people show up to consider auditioning. I get less like questions on Facebook. I have no idea how this works, but I'm telling you, if you're putting effort into it, and especially if you're like kind of the, the the leader or whatever you want to call it, if you're starting up this band, if you put energy and effort into the band, people somehow will be attracted to that. Especially if you're putting stuff on YouTube or putting stuff out in the world that people can really consume. So it's one thing to be doing stuff in your room, which like I'm said in other videos, is awesome and you should be doing that. If you can put that out in the world for people to uh, interact with, that's even better. So it's kind of why I'm doing this. Um, but if you do that, people will be attracted to that and want to be in the band with you. A, just some abstract energy. I don't know how it works, but I'm telling you it does. B, if you have more stuff out there, that's a band that's really doing something and people will want to be a part of that. You can kind of leverage that. Uh, obviously, if you think about it, would you rather play for like a local band that's getting started and maybe will be successful, or would you want to be with a band that's already doing something and successful? Pros and cons to that, obviously, but the band that's doing something that's already successful has an advantage because they are already successful. They've already gotten some of the steps out of the way, and there's less risk that it's like just a waste of time for another person to join the band. So, first thing, you yourself do shit. Uh, second thing is. Um, Craigslist ads. Craigslist gets a bad rap, but from what I've experienced for finding musicians, it's the best option. There's other websites out there. I've tried them. I haven't gotten any good experience with them. If anyone's watching this and has good experience, please comment below. I'd actually be open to checking that out because we're not totally set on the lineup yet. Um, I've used Craigslist. That's how I got Joey in the band. Um, a couple other people that we're currently jamming with also from Craigslist. Um, um, but uh, talking to other friends who are in bands and a lot of them got their members also from Craigslist. It seems like Craigslist is the way to go. Secondarily, you might also try Facebook groups. Um, for some reason, that doesn't get the results that I would think it would, but if you like type in your city on Facebook and like look up like Los Angeles metalheads or something like that, there's usually a group or a page that you can contribute to. And some of those pages are specifically for um, like meeting people to join the band. So like Seeking Musicians Los Angeles or some shit. Um, there's a few of those on Facebook that I've posted on and the feedback is not great. Maybe it has something to do with Facebook's algorithm, I really have no idea. Um, but this is just my experience. 
Craigslist, Craigslist ads, Facebook ads. Make your ad uh, like professional, like use complete sentences and proper English and stuff. Um, if you have a shitty ad, you're gonna attract shitty people, in my opinion. Um, make things like fit your vibe and be crystal clear about what you want. So make it clear about what you want to be doing with the band, what style you envision the band being, um, any expectations you have from the musicians, you know, do they need to travel to the practice studio, is there an expectation they have to contribute to like a lockout, rental fee, anything like that. Uh, and also, I mean, if you have music, so much easier. It's really hard to convince people to join a band that you have no music, like, as an example of. Um, people want to know what your style's like and that you're talented, so make sure that's all in your ad or in your post. Um, you can, for example, make a Craigslist post, a Craigslist, like a, a Craigslist ad, and then post that as your Facebook post in the Musicians Wanted group, which is something I've done. Just make sure that whatever you post online, that they have a way to contact you. I mean, your own Facebook page or a Facebook page for your band, that's all good options. Um, SoundCloud, people can message you on there. I think people are pretty in tune with this stuff, so uh, just make it obvious how they can contact you. All right. Uh, third thing is going to local shows. This, to me, has been like the most impactful thing in my music career is going to local shows. Now, I emphasize local shows because local shows are more of a social event, whereas going to like a concert, like, uh, you know, in LA, like going to like the Hollywood Palladium or um, like House of Blues, I don't think that's around anymore, but stuff like that, that's more like you're there to see the bands. If you go to a local show, people are there to kind of mingle and network in a sense. Um, so show up there, talk to people, and uh, it's helpful to have a business card or something like that. Something that's like super convenient just to go, oh, hey, check out my band or check out my page or whatever uh, with your phone number, email, and any links to like YouTube channel or Facebook or whatever, SoundCloud. Um, that just makes it way more convenient for everyone to check out what you're doing. And it's also convenient just if, even if it's not, if you're, even if you're not talking to people who maybe want to be in your band, um, it's convenient for sharing your music with other people. Um, uh, you don't need to like go to every local show, okay? Um, what I recommend, and this is something that I've done, is start with just like one show every two weeks. You don't need to be that guy who's way too old to be there, who's at every show and he's always drunk and he's just sitting there with his fucking denim jacket with all the patches on it. You don't need to be that guy. Go to one or two shows a month, start there. The downside to local shows is that it's less targeted than the internet. I mean, the internet, you can put a description on there and it's like internet dating, you know, people can see what you're into and they can search for that or they can in, in, explore that based on what they're into. Local shows, I mean, you have no idea if the people around you can play an instrument. So it's less targeted, but the advantage is that it's face to face so you can get a sense of what people are like. I mean, Craigslist, yeah. I certainly have gotten plenty of messages on Craigslist from people who are fucking weirdos, let's just be real. Um, so local shows and that like face-to-face -face interaction definitely has that advantage. So again, start with a couple shows a month. If you have more time, more money. I mean, in LA, it's a fucking pain in the ass to drive to some of these shows, so you can't do it every day. Um, but you do, do what you can. It's better to do a little bit than none at all, okay? Um, so I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. I'm trying to keep these videos short so that you can just kind of dive, you know, consume it and uh, not spend forever watching it, and then go out there and actually do stuff. And I also want this stuff to be practical and actionable. So um, if there's uh, any comments on any of this stuff, any different ideas maybe other, other bands or other musicians have, post it below. That would be awesome. I don't know if my finger's in camera. So thanks for watching. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more. I'm going to be posting more of these. And I will see you in the next video.